<laughs> yeah, there you go. Kathy, can you hear me? <laughs> and this is Bill Rampey, and Bill grew up in Webster. And the fascinating thing that we think we want to hear about is he also grew up in the log cabin. I don't know if you call well, it that. Yeah, but I didn't. It was my grandmother lived there, but yeah. my father grew up in the log cabin. Oh, okay. Oh, you didn't live there? No. For some reason. Oh, just uh, Peter Elder sat there. Somebody told me 15 years you were there. No. Okay. Okay. His dad's name is Bill also, so uh, that may okay. be what, what he was yeah. thinking. Okay. So, um, anyway, uh, the other thing, I've heard many stories. They said when you get him talking, he talks and talks. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. And somebody you. told me, but I don't think that's possible. Riding your, you could ride your bicycle from Webster to Counterline Road. Oh yeah. Without seeing a house. And ride a, ride my horse. And ride your horse. Okay. Oh, yeah. Then you got to tell a story. <laughs> I don't know that part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Good. Good. Sit get started. Here. Enjoy yourself. Okay. <clears throat> now, of course, Jan just about said everything. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Webster. Uh, and. Uh, where do I go from here, Jen? What are we looking for? Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, well, uh, okay. Shoemaker. Um, Is that where you grew up? Was that Shoemaker? Started on the Whitlow. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the, the house, house with the glass Whitlow. connection there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. With, the, oh, with the arch <laughs> breeze there. Yeah. 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 yeah, my father, uh, the original house uh, that my father mm -hmm. built was on DeWitt Road. And then in the uh, in the later 40s, uh, we moved to uh, Shoemaker Road, and that's where I grew up is on Shoemaker Road, and so uh, so I kind of hit both ends of the ho of the uh, town. <coughs> oh, excuse me, mm -hmm. but uh, but we, my wife and I, joke about it because she grew up on Gla Gravel Road, <laughs> and and we live on Whiting Road now, so. So we joked that I moved just around the corner, and she had to come all the way from Gravel Road <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but, uh, but we grew up, I grew up on, on Shoemaker Road, and it was a it was a great time to be a kid, I guess. Uh, um, we had pretty much the run of of the town, and like like Jan said, uh, ride my horse from Shoemaker Road to the county line. Just through farm fields and stuff, at, well, orchards, I should say. But, uh, but then, then beyond that, you know, we could ride our bikes up to the village. But the, uh, but some of this fun thing about growing up on Shoemaker Road uh, was a, a neighborhood that became very involved with horses. Mm -hmm. uh, my. Uh, my mother grew up on a, in a horse stable. My grandfather was uh, uh, was uh, was a horseman, and, uh, and he, uh, he ran uh, ran a stable. And and uh, this was in the uh, fox hunting country, so my mother uh, had quite a background in, in horses. So, so I got my first pony that my grandfather was sure that I had a pony by, by the time I was three years old. And, oh my goodness. And so, so I was riding at three, but, but it seemed to the neighborhood in the 60s kind of evolved that everybody got in the neighborhood got involved with, with horses. There was uh, Arnie Reed and Ed Siebert were down the road a ways, and they, uh, so they, they had had horses and barn, but, uh, but then as the people in the neighborhood, everybody started buying a horse, and I can, there was a number of houses down the road, all the way from from Holt Road down to um, out to Gene Midnight's house. Everybody had a horse, yeah. so that was, but that was kind of neat because we had we had a driving horse and. Uh, and and um, a couple of sleighs in the winter time. We had a cutter, and then we had a like a Santa Claus sleigh with a rounded back, and then there was a smaller sleigh for the kids. 
the toad behind there. And we, uh, and he had the horse, the driving horse, always he had special shoes with spikes on them and, uh, and rubber pads between his yeah. hoof and, and his shoes that, uh, to protect his feet. And we had all the jingle bells and the harness and everything and went all over the town with that, with that horse. And we did the same thing with the buggy in the summertime. In different times we'd drive the horse up into the village and stuff and that was that was kind of fun and then beyond there I think uh, uh, you know we, we'd ride our bicycle in the village up into the village like you said but uh, uh, but the neighborhood was was quite quite in, quite involved in, in the horses and it lasted for a long time yeah. and there's still a couple of uh, a couple of um, people that still have horses on Shoemaker Road. Well, there's a couple tree houses that still have barns, too, even mm -hmm. though they don't have horses anymore. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I can remember that Arab that uh, mm -hmm. Arnie Reed used yeah. to have. Yeah. He had a he had a little brown Arab that was probably one of the most beautiful horses you've ever seen. And uh, it was a championship stock, I think, or something mm -hmm. like that. But he used to ride that horse, because I live at the other end of Shoemaker. <laughs> He used to ride down as far as our house, or maybe to Van Alstein, and turn around and come back. Yeah. And and that horse at certain times, you know how you see them when they're kind of prancing sideways? Yeah. That little horse would do that, and boy, he just looked like a million bucks coming down the road. Yeah. He really it was a pretty great. horse. Yeah, yeah. Ernie's got a great big picture of him up on the wall there. You know, yeah. We had him do some printing for another group a few years ago. Okay. But your mother was involved pretty heavily in, in what, with show horses and stuff mm -hmm. too? Yeah. yeah. We're, well, my mother just recently died and going through all of, all of the family stuff and some of the photographs. But, uh, but <clears throat> I have two younger brothers that ended up world champions. Oh, and, my goodness. And also, uh, also my mother rode, rode several horses to uh, uh, championships. Yeah, so we've got that at her funeral. That's one of the pictures I wanted to have. There's her on a her on a horse and uh, yeah. and a big championship belt buckle. That uh, is one of the things. That, now, what what did they? What kind of riding were they doing? This is all Western. Riding, Western, not not English. And of and course, she grew up yeah. riding English and well, that's what I was thinking. And, yeah, so, you know, the fox hunts. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. So that was. I never rode English. I needed a Western saddle with a horn to hang on to for dear life. <laughs> yeah, it's a different, different kind of riding, but it's a, but it's the horses were always fun, and we were always you know, a big part of our lives. Yeah. yeah. Did you have horses when you grew up? Uh, yes. Oh, you did. The, uh, and up until, oh, I don't, I don't remember when. Uh, when we got the lad, Kathy and I had the last of the horses, but uh, mm -hmm. but a joke about that. When she married me, she got got myself a horse and a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, but she uh, she took to animals, so so everything was well. But it was probably into the 70s that we oh really oh, that's good. that we we got the last okay. of the horses were gone. So where did you go to school? From Lady, Shoemaker, Lady huh? Webster. Yeah. Now, but up here? Yes, but I started uh, with DeWitt Road. Oh, okay. The, uh, the little school on the corner of uh, oh. Bay Road and... Uh, oh, yeah? Bacchus, yeah. And, and Bacchus, yeah. yeah. And that's where, where I started school. Not very long, but just in the pro right. time that we were moving to Shoemaker Road. So, so that was, uh, it was a neat... Now, did you ride your horse to school? No. No. <laughs> no. I took the school bus. Oh, oh you yeah, had the school bus. No. And, uh, and Bob Murs was always a school bus driver. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> How fast did you get to school? <laughs> I got there. Yeah. yeah. Safe and sound. Bob, Bob Murs was a big stock car driver here in uh, town. Oh, <laughs> That's the reason I asked that. Yeah. Better known as Mort. Yeah. Uh, yeah was afraid to say more <laughs> everybody would recognize. Yeah, well, 
I don't know, looking around the room. Well, I know two, three people that will know who he is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so then did you go up here to Spry then? Mm -hmm. Or it's yeah. now Spry? Yeah. But you probably graduated with Marrell, didn't you? We did. Yeah. yeah. I said we did. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, graduated from Marrell. Yeah. Now, I got one question. What was the dog that you brought with you? I'm sorry. The dog. A horse, Kathy got you a oh. horse or a dog? Oh. It wasn't Actually, Albert, was it? No. Oh, okay. No, it wasn't Albert. Albert was the beagle. Uh, my father-in-law, we talked about that. We named the beagle Albert after my father-in-law. He said he always wanted a grandson named after him. So, so Albert the beagle was... Uh, was a grandson that he was named That's after. cute. And they had, I got to tell one story. I was over there one day, and they had the... Uh, invisible fence for the dog and there's big open spaces out behind his house I'm waiting and Albert would be up by the house and he'd see a rabbit or something out in the field and he'd get back a ways and he'd start running <laughs> and the closer he got to the fence the more his head would bend down and pretty soon it would be yip and he'd jump right through it <laughs> and then Bill would go out and get him turn it off and go out again. <laughs> didn't care. He just went and did his thing. <laughs> funny. Oh, oh my goodness. He was. he was a funny dog. He yeah. Was, he always, he was a character though. <laughs> oh. Everything you'd want in a beagle. The voice, the whole night here. <laughs> energy, energy. Energy, yeah. Energy. yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, I can still remember you telling him about that though. Because I knew his father-in-law very well, Albert Rebus. And, um, uh, he was always harping about the grandchildren, you know, the Italian descent and all this other kind of stuff. Of course, Bill's got a couple of girls. So he told me the dog's name was Albert. I just went right down to one knee because I knew exactly why. He <laughs> uh, was a great dog. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you remember uh, that time. I always remember going to your house on Shoemaker for different reasons, mm -hmm. not because we really didn't know each other at that point all that well. Not that uh, well. But his dad was a builder, and um, I worked for an architect that was doing some custom houses and stuff like that, and he and his dad would, would be uh, involved in, in building some of that stuff. And so I was the natural uh, delivery boy for the prince to their house uh, for them to uh, to go over and uh, did that for a lot of years. Yeah, yeah so we years. had a working relationship outside of uh, yeah. the friendship uh, yeah. that uh, involved in the business. <clears throat> yeah, that was, and then of course a lot of you know Bill was deeply involved and in, uh, we, we came, we, we were good friends by this point, we came together in Oh gosh, what would it be? Probably late seventies, early eighties on the zoning board. Okay, that would have been yeah, the ZBA. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You started on the zoning board then, before you went to the town board. Yes. Yeah. I went from the zoning board to the town board to the planning board to the. <laughs> <laughs> to taking it easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would have been, yeah. Yeah, I was I was chairing the board at that point in time, and then when I dropped away, because they had a few too many things going on, um, Bill took over as chairman there and stayed there for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. I think it was 16 years or something on the, on the ZBA. Yeah. I think all in all, I got I think 35 or 36 years in with the town. Yeah. yeah. Through, uh, you know, through, uh, through master plans or comprehensive yeah, plans yeah, and, no. and code, code, codes being written and get, uh, it's, uh, always, always something to do in town. <laughs> you know, never, uh, never a lack of, uh, lack of effort needed. Well, Kathy sat on the town board for the church too. She yeah. did. She served one term and politics were not for her. Yeah. yeah. She decided to leave <laughs> When was Kathy on? Pardon? When was she on? Uh, uh, the 
Was she at the same the, time you were? Early 90s. Early 90s. Oh, okay. Because when my predecessor at the town was retiring and I decided that I wanted to uh, try and, and get the building inspector's seat, uh, Kathy was on the, that was, I, I got that job in August of 94, and Kathy was on the board then because she's the one I made the initial contact with. Oh, okay. And um, at that time, uh, Henry Quiala was uh, town oh, supervisor. supervisor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was, uh, so it had to be probably around 92, so she was probably yeah. there in that, uh, yeah. that four-year stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was 90, early 90s. Now, who, do you remember who was your favorite teacher or in school? You know, I, I think about that every so often. Uh, okay. In fact, I was thinking about it just the other day, uh, uh, about uh, Jean DeWitt. But, um, but uh, were you a musician? No, I wasn't. But he was, um, his son Doug yeah. was a friend. You remember Doug? Yeah. And then, um, but I wasn't involved really in, in the music. Oh, other okay. Than, other than that he was a teacher. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, uh, his daughter Karen graduated with me from school. She's back in town here now, or has been for quite a while. She's an assistant pastor over at. You know, Methodist. Yeah. Oh I really? Stop and think. I, I still want to say the EUB. <laughs> it's yeah. too deeply ingrained. Tom, maybe you remember, but I, I can't. Um, I do remember Miss Dunn. Oh, uh, Esther Dunn. Esther Dunn. Yeah. 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 She. She. Uh, she's the one that made an impression on me. Uh, Too. Yeah. yeah. So. I never. Never had her. I don't know how that worked out. Huh? Yeah. But we always. <laughs> we always. Uh, uh, always. There is. Uh, we had to learn a poem, and I don't know whether it was monthly or weekly or whatever, but. Uh, uh, but I, I remember the poem about the, the tree. Uh, but I couldn't. But every so often it pops into my I head. Know, and I, know. I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't recite it if I had to. Uh, uh, but uh, it's something like uh, a poem as lovely as a tree. Right? That one. Yep. And it was, I was trying to get, trying to retrieve it. And I had a little bit of it. That's all I can do. Uh, but I said. Homes were made by fools oh, yeah. like me, but only God can make a tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the one I remembered. Yeah, first. <laughs> yeah. But she was mean. And, uh, I thought some years ago when uh, Joyce Kilmer was a woman, I never realized it was a man until I found out about more about history and stuff. He got killed during World War One. I. I don't know if you knew that. Or yeah. yeah, he was killed over in Europe shortly after he wrote the poem. I think. Now, um, so your grandmother built the log cabin? No. No. Okay. And Tom is, probably knows more about that, as much about the history of the cabin. It's, well, I, I don't know if I'd say that, though. I, most of what I know I've got from you. Yeah. But the cabin was built, and I'm not sure exactly when it was built, but it was built by the Houdanese Indians or, or what? As far as we can tell, we're Native trying, Americans. What we're trying to find is the Mississaugas, the Indians, lived here in Webster uh -huh. for about 20 years, from 1850, I don't know, some 20 years. And uh, so we're trying to find out exactly where, we don't know where. And then we read how they learned to build stuff and like it. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, well, maybe that cabin or house was built by them too but it was indians you think it was indians yeah okay well, yeah, but, um, but but it was my understanding that they came from down from canada yeah that's where the yeah. mississauga the Mississauga. okay yeah right. see we've been able to determine jan's been chasing around 
that apparently they lived in that woods up behind the bowling alley that abuts to mm -hmm. uh, what's the park with the baseball diamonds and everything there on Empire, you know where I'm Empire talking about. Park. Yeah. Uh, well, there was a there's a stream that runs down through there underneath the bowling alley, and I forgot what it's called, guys. Yes. But anyway, and it comes out at Gravel Road, down by the that overpass, you know, on Gravel. Okay. Um, I forgot what the name is, but of course, in in that time, it would have been a lot different. It would look different. So, probably more water and everything. Mm -hmm. I think so. I'm wondering the, if they live down in there. Some of the Mississauga, <clears throat> and I'm going to call it legend for the sake right. of anything else, yeah. uh, came from Dick Batesing. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Dick ever had anything that he could nail down. All we got is George that. Harris. George Harris is our source. And George Harris, and everybody refers back to him, even is he in the guy all the, at the books. museum? Huh? Is he the guy at the museum? No, here. Oh. I mean, in, in, he actually, he owned property in Webster. Oh, okay. If it's the same George Harris, I don't know. And he talked to farmers who knew the Indians, so, mm -hmm. and he wrote about it. And then everybody else now has been, you know, sources him, and that's way back. But we want to find, you know, the facts. Yeah. <laughs> we can't find the facts. Well, Bill's got a small postcard sized yeah. picture with him today. Now, when was this yeah. taken? This is a this is a photograph that my father took, uh, and it would have been somewhere in the mid thirties, okay. uh, and uh, you know so, somewhere in the mid thirties. But he had a little dark room down in the basement of the cabin, and this is a, a photograph that he took, and and that I have the original one. Oh, no. So a, a friend uh, a friend took that picture. Because it's curled and, and yeah. kind of deteriorated, but uh, but he's a curator for the uh, George Eastman House. Oh, nice. So so he took that and oh, they nice. did some work on it, and then uh, uh, he got it on a disc uh -huh. so that it can be manipulated and stuff. And uh, and I wanted to have that, and yeah. um, like I said, I got we can pass now. Does everybody know where we're yeah. talking about Does with the log cabin? Where this camp, what, where it, was? it was on the north side of Ridge Road. Uh, the backyard is probably now Target. It's right across the street from the rural cemetery. Yeah. Uh, it sat in there. But uh, it got torn down when the town center got built, and that's a that's a story he doesn't like to talk about, but it's part of the whole thing and everything too. Yeah, uh, Tell him about the, the the mailbox and all of that kind of stuff. It's the, uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's something that really bothers me to this day. Oh but, my goodness! But my grandmother was first approached a number of times to sell the the property, and uh, the first was in there was a developer wanted to build a shopping center, and this was in 58, and, uh, and yeah. in which she, of course, refused, and, and she was continuously approached to sell the property. But, uh, but there, there came a point in time that uh, the neighbors started selling their, uh, their property, and it's more when there was uh, about the time that there was the lawsuit over, if you remember when oh, Hegedorn, yeah. Bruce Hegedorn, Hegedorn wanted to build a yeah, build yeah. there and, and uh, now was this Dobbs? It, yes, it was Leonard, Leonard Dobbs, Dobbs, Dobbs at that there, point. Yeah. So, so at any rate, there, there got to a point where all the neighbors were had sold, and and my grandmother was the the only the only holdout, oh, and it got to a point. That, uh, that she did sell with uh, the lifelong use of the cabin. So, which, which she was in, lived there for, for a number of years. And uh, so, there, um, uh, there was, the, the Leonard Dobbs was one of them that was buying up this property, and he, I think he went bankrupt. And then, there was another bankruptcy, I can't think of the name, but then uh, uh, Prudential Insurance 
ended up with the property. Uh, in about, uh, they, they held the mortgage on it. So, so about this time, uh, about this time, bear with me a minute, well, I, the Prudential, Prudential held the mortgage on it. And, uh, and we started, and this started with Charlie Sexton, who was the, uh, 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 the recreation director in town. And we looked at the cabin, and our first, first thought was to move it, uh, because this, this property was all being sold for development, and we knew it was going to happen. So we, uh, we looked for a, a location, a potential location to be able to move that. And I did have uh, some house movers that I had worked with in the past, looked at the cabin and how we could do it, and it, would it be possible? And it would be possible, oh, I thought. But, but the big thing was moving it uh, down the road. There'd be so many overhead wires and stuff. And, and at that point, there was the expressway bridge over, oh, yeah. over Holt Road had been built. So it just wasn't feasible. And at that point in time, uh, Wegmans bought all of that property from Ridge Road down to including the Eckler Farm, which basically went right up to the uh, right up to the expressway. So so Wegmans bought all their property. And so so the cabin the cabin sat there and well the cabin didn't sit there. Uh, Charlie and we, and I was involved approached Wegmans to donate the cabin and a small enough piece of land around it for a little parking lot and stuff, and Wegmans wouldn't do it. Uh, they, they, they literally slammed the door in our face. But then, uh, uh, so, you know, that, that was a, a dead, it turned out to be a dead end. So, at some point in time and, and whenever it happened, Kathy called me on the job one day and she had driven by and she said, they're knocking down the cab. Uh -huh. So, so I got there as fast as I could at the end of the day and, and it was all gone. And the only thing that I, I was able to save, the mailbox was there. And my father had always made mailboxes out of nail kegs. Uh, and, uh, that's a good idea. And so, <laughs> you know, oh, they're neat. And, and so, I salvaged the mailbox, but that's that and a photograph is all that I have yeah. left. But but you got to drag me kicking and screaming into a Wegman's store. <laughs> I just you know it's it's a personal thing. I know, yeah. good for you. But that was well, of course, and they didn't develop it anyway. They no. sold it off the core to uh -huh. build the town center. But when you look at but when you look at the property, the the setbacks and buffers, nothing could ever be built there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so it would, it would have cost anybody, it wouldn't have cost anybody anything, but good they will. would have gained a lot of goodwill <clears throat> for the town to have that there. And, uh, and, but, you know, anyway, Denise told me there's a book. Yes. Okay, what's that? Uh, that is... Well, it's the rich, the arch. It's an oh. arch Merrill book. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. That, yeah. And, um, and now. Yeah, uh, it mentions it mentions in there that it was built by Native Americans, but uh, yeah. and he talks about the Mississaugas in that book too. I yeah, think. I did. But, but up, he, up he, at the he sources home. George Harris. Yeah. See, we're trying to go beyond that. <laughs> we're trying to find somebody who's, you know, can give us more yeah. facts. We're starting to go through some of the things at my mother's house, and, uh, uh, and I'm looking for anything that I can find. And there's got to be up in all the bookcases. There's got to be. I got to be bad? able to turn something else. Did she collect there. everything? <laughs> um, you know, there's a, well a lot of stuff when my grandmother died. A lot oh, of the, yeah. the stuff went into yeah. some bookcases at. Uh, at the farm in Victor, is where my mother and father uh, built their, their final house. But, uh, 
but the uh, but the cabin itself. Yeah, that's when I I wondered who did your grandmother buy it from? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, but there, there's. She might have the paperwork on that. Yeah, you know, the town might have something that some or some old deeds filed or, or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Um, because but the when when my grandparents bought it, it was um. Uh, it was not finished inside. It was the same inside as, as you see it on the outside. But uh, and my grandfather uh, was uh, was was re redoing redoing the inside, and uh, and he ended up dying with stomach stomach cancer. And my father was probably a teenager then. And he did the whole interior of the house. Uh -huh. So, so when you walk in the front door, that there's there's a bathroom. There's a bathroom to the right, and and the, and this was on a, an upper landing. And my grandmother's concert grand piano uh -huh. was on the left. And then you went down several steps to the living room and dining room and, and master bedroom and kitchen. And then you also went up the stairs to two bedrooms upstairs. So, but the but the cabin itself. Richard. You know, <laughs> uh, He's pushing all the buttons. <laughs> oh, honest to God, sometimes and and that happens to you when you're trying to. It just happened to me. You know, but the uh, the when my when my grandparents bought it. Uh, it was a it was a fur it was a fur farm, and a fur a fur farm. Yes, they're raising minks. Ah, it's getting close to Indians. <laughs> so, so in the uh, in the back was all of the uh, uh, the sheds for the oh, for the minks. Yeah. But uh, but then there was some displays and stuff in the uh, in the cabin. But uh, but Lowell Thomas. Broadcast from the cabin, oh. and so, so, uh, so that's one little fact that I know. Why? Why did he broadcast from? I don't know. You don't why. know. <laughs> I just know that he did. Uh, Interesting. Because that was. Well, he used to do programs on traveling around America, didn't he? Like kind of like what Charles Corral did later yeah. years or whatever yeah. that way. So maybe it was something with that. But and how we got yeah, to you never told me about that. I don't remember hearing about that. Was that, I I was that videoed? I don't it, think so. Uh, well, I mean, some of the old stuff was, some uh, wasn't. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't know when I don't have, we don't have anything. Uh, but I, I do know that he... Uh, he did broadcast from the cabin. Was, <laughs> Maybe we could find it on Fulton News or something, you know, mm -hmm. like a write-up in the Webster Herald or something. Maybe. But that, uh, Bill has been telling me how that cabin was constructed, and you can see some of it in the in the picture. Um, uh, the roof, Mud? The roof <laughs> was like poles, right? Yes. See, in the, in the old days, when, when people use wood shingles on roofs, you don't have solid sheeting like we do now, plywood or, or in a strand board or anything like that. They put what they call skip framing, um, horizontal slats, if you will, and then the shingles got nailed to that. And the reason for that was to, was to allow air on the underside of the shingles so that they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't run out. Right. Correct me if I'm screwing this up, but normally the shingles that you see that you can still buy are, you know, wooden shingles of maybe 18, 24 inches high and random widths up to not even a foot or whatever. But what was the size of the ones that were on here? They were about five foot long. Oh, wow. Oh, you imagine that? Because... <laughs> I can't even imagine how they got something like that off of a tree or something. To split, to split those. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. trees were big in those days. Well, yeah. there's logs in there. What were you telling me? Were, oh, they they were. Yeah. Twenty four inches at the bud. Oh my easy. goodness. Yeah. And all all axe cut. Mm. Yeah. 
Well, that's the old growth stuff, you know. I yeah. love that story. That's a good story. Yeah, it does it's about that. That's the construction of that was just. Uh, what they put between the lot was it mud? Like you know? it was. It was mortar. Mortar. Oh, the shaking, okay. yeah, yeah. With uh, there was oakum, oakum between it, uh, between the logs, and then cement mortar. A cement mortar. Yeah. yeah. Oh. What kind of trees do you think? <clears throat> Big ones. <laughs> See, I really don't know. Uh, whatever would be native to the area. I, I know, because they were oh, just probably even right in our there on the property, whatever it was. If that's right where they got them from. Probably <coughs> old growth elm would be because elm has a longer life. Doesn't rot away as fast as. Yeah. yeah there was, uh, it's, uh, of course. Old growth back then would have been some pretty good sized hardwoods. Oh, yeah. So I doubt if they were pine. They might have been, but could have been a softwood. But yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Well, up in our attic, we've got floorboards like this. You know what I mean? Isn't that great? Yeah, they're big. When you see a piece of when you see a piece of lumber like that, and it's. Uh, and it's yeah. so wide. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I can't even. I mean, I know we've got old growth trees down here, the big woods walk down off of uh, Bosberg and stuff like that, where that goes back in. On the back side of my great grandfather's farm, there's, there's, uh, there's old growth trees in there. There's one down there. I've forgotten what the diameter of the thing now is, humongous. But, uh, that's the kind of tree that you don't see anymore around here. You know, they, they haven't been around long enough or grown to that size. To yeah, that's really what it was. Because when the first settlers came in, they probably cut them all down and cleared the land. Yeah. Build their houses and build their farms. Well, the farms, yeah. But some of them are amazing. Uh, we've got a piece of property on Drum Road and uh, in the ravines. Uh, the ravines off of Drum Road, uh, uh, along, uh, uh, gosh, isn't it awful? In all Vosburgh Road, uh, down down in the hollow. We, we've got oh, down like in this, Lake Jensel uh, Farm and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, and we've got our ravine is by Fergie's, and then there's one too. We're we're kind of the second, we're the third ravine, I think, but we have. Uh, oaks growing there down in the bottom of the ravine. The ravine is 68 feet deep. Oh. And, uh, and you look way up to the first branch. It's, oh the, the trees are massive. And, uh, and it's amazing that these trees survived. Where he's talking about is you come around the corner. Yeah, I, remember, I know. On the Vosburgh and you drop yeah, down that big hill down to where the old Ojak line used to go through and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's all on the edge of that, uh, yeah. that ravine. My dad used to talk about over in that area too because uh, I think some of the Fergies worked for my grandfather or something like that and they all worked around together there, went to school together and, and that kind of thing. But, uh, it's a beautiful piece boy. of property down there yeah. with the ravines and everything and, and we got deer and we got turkeys. and. Oh, nice. With the oak trees. Oh, yeah, um, sure. Acorns. With the acorns, yeah. yeah. You, you own down. that? You own that, Bill? Yes. You own it? Yeah? Yeah. Nice. We, uh, I was, I bought the property and I was had to build a new house. <laughs> I knew just what I wanted to, just what I wanted to do. And, and at the time, Kathy kind of talked me out of it. <laughs> and, uh, she was right. But it's a beautiful piece of property. I yeah. just go over there and walk. You still own it, don't you? Yeah. 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 Good. Good. Build a lean to down there. <laughs> Remember, we talked about that at one point. In time. Yeah. Yeah. I told them the drawing board's all warmed up. If you need it, let me know. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, no, that's, uh, I kept, I just kept drawing and sketching, and I figured I wanted to build, you know, 2,800 feet or so, 3,000 feet, and before I knew it, I was up to four, and, <laughs> drawing, and I was down to 35, and Kathy said, you know, why do we want to do this at this point in our lives? And she was right. <laughs> <coughs> you kind of 
I'm kind of rambling and getting off topic, though, I think. Uh, no, that was no, that's okay. No, that's no, we're really interested in, because I don't know that we have a picture of the cabin here. Do we? Tom? No, Bill is going to set up for us for something with that. Are you going to get us one? Well, I have it for you. If oh. I, I didn't. If I had known you were going to be here and thought about it, I would have brought it with you. Well, it's a museum, of course. I live here, right? Two, uh, yeah. says, why don't you get a cat and stay up there? <laughs> but I, I do have, I don't know, 9 by 10 or whatever, uh, big photograph size. 8 by 10, somewhere around yeah, there. Somewhere yeah. around yeah. that. But, um, nice. Good, be because we don't have any documentation of it. Until you can see some of the detail in this small oh, one, but I think yeah. I think the bigger one will will point out even yeah. more. And it, now, is that the one that's got a little bit of sepia tone to it? Yes. So that's going to be that's going to be classic. That'll yeah. be like an old photograph. Yeah. yeah. We could have it doctored by Rose, however we wanted to. If yeah. We wanted to get rid of the snow. Yeah, uh, I think I think the, the the sepia tone would be very appropriate to have. Um, but we can get as big a as big a enlargement as the museum would like. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, that would go very good. Yeah. Really and over. any history you find in your mother's house, <laughs> we wish love. You know that. <laughs> when did they move from Shoemaker down to Victor? I'm trying to. I can't remember. Late eighties. Was it early okay? Nineties. Yeah. Did they miss Webster? I'm sorry. Did they miss Webster? My mother, to, to the day she died, missed Webster. <laughs> and, uh, and my father built what a very nice house on the, out on the farm. And, yeah. Uh, but it was big, and, and my mother just wanted, uh, would have liked to have her house on Shoemaker Road back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she missed it. His dad, I had one experience as a building inspector, and uh, what's Doris's last name? Uh, Down in the sandbar. Yeah. Doris Britt. Doris Britt. Oh, Doris Britt. You know her, the yeah. artist? Yeah, yeah the artist. A very good artist. Um, she has a house down on the sandbar off uh, Oklahoma Beach. There. Yeah. And she's an artist, and so in the in the summer she's, where is she? She's up off of Cape Cod or someplace like that, someplace. isn't she? One of the islands there or whatever. She spends the winter in Florida, but she does her springs and falls here in, in Webster. And uh, I got a call from his dad one day. He says, I'm down here, you gotta come down. <laughs> and I said, Bill, I, I, I'm right in the middle of something. I don't care, you need to get down here as fast as you can. So I wrapped up lightly whatever it was that I was doing and I went, <laughs> went down there. And, and I don't know if you've ever driven back in there, but you know, you, you could barely get two cars passing each other <laughs> side by side. And I've often thought it's a beautiful place to live, but I'd never want to have to get a fire truck or an ambulance down there. <laughs> but uh, I pulled off as far as I could, and his dad is grabbing two by fours off the back of his truck and almost literally running into the house. And I said, He's I gotta brace the ridge of this place. Uh, Take a look at the well, the poor lady, not knowing, every time she'd have a little bit of a problem with the roof, she'd call somebody up and they would just put another roof on. Oh dear Lord. And when when you start a, a, a roof, you take a roll of shingles upside down first and then put the the first layer on over the top of that so it gives it a little kick at the end. And where they had done that, down by the eaves, I counted 20 layers of roofing. Oh, <laughs> So that means there was probably 10 layers on the house. And so he's running in trying to support the ceiling so the thing doesn't cave in. And, and uh, they finally, they ended up, of course, stripping everything off. But the problem was, was the top layers, you kept having problems because the top layers we're not nailed into anything except a couple of layers of shingles below it. And they put, the, you know how they put the, the metal edges, the, what they call a drip edge and stuff on there? 
there were so many of those on there, they actually looked like a fascia <laughs> on, the, on the side of the house. It was amazing. But boy, I've never seen his dad move as fast as he was going that day. That was a, that roof was a mess. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. We did quite a bit of work yeah. on it, too, after... Uh, really? After, after that? After that. Yeah. 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 She's a delightful lady. I don't know. You, yeah, so we you, had her artwork up here. Remember when we did oh, the art yeah, show? Yeah. She brought her artwork yeah. up. Yeah. I the thing I uh, I liked about got to know her. She came into the town hall one day. I think again I used to see a lot of people because the assessing department was right next to the building department. So when people would come in to pay their taxes, the the town clerk would say. You might want to go over and check and make sure all of your uh, different items are, are on the assessment, you know, if you got any discounts coming or anything like that. So people would come over, and, and she was one of them one day, and we just got to talking at the counter, and she told me she was an artist, and she says, well, the way you're talking, you, I said, no, I just wood carve. I don't paint anymore. I haven't done that in years. And she wanted to know what, and I told her the, the small carousel horses and stuff. And um, she had photographs of the carousel horses at Seabreeze oh, that nice. got lost in the fire mm -hmm. when they had that horrendous fire over there. Yeah. And, uh, and she made some copies of some of them for me. I've got them home someplace. Uh, but she was fortunate enough to be over there I don't know what she intended to do because she she really didn't paint anything like that. Mm -hmm. But maybe she was planning on doing something with it, never did or whatever. But uh, she had photographed them all. Uh, Is she still alive? I, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think oh, so. Nice. Yeah. I saw her a few years ago. Uh, Granger Homestead down in Canandaigua mm -hmm. is a fundraiser every year. They have that... Uh, Christmas? What do they call it? Not Chris Kringle, but it's something where they with Christmas trees, yeah, right? Yeah, they and, and they put up big tents and they have food and yeah. they have all these artists come in and so on. And uh, uh, we went down. It was several years ago, but she was down there then, uh, displaying her art and so on and so forth. She's very good. Smaller stuff. Yeah, what yeah. she does. But uh, is that a nice place to live down where she lives? Well, I th I think it's so. Is yeah. it is it nice? Yeah. It doesn't get like water. And uh, well, I don't know how it survived this <laughs> last year or so. I think it gets pounded, but yeah. they put a lot of riprap. Yeah. Oh, down, did they? Along yeah. that, that the whole big wall. stone and everything in there. But there's, yeah. yeah. But there's been a couple of uh, newer how new houses built on uh, there. Yeah. You it see, does yeah. look like a neat little hideaway, but. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, one new house is, is even cut through the old railroad bank, yep. uh -huh. so you don't have to drive that whole length. You can go right straight in. But that'll be that'll be nice pretty soon too down there too, because the, the the town's gonna enhance that park and everything down there. The the sandbar park. With yeah, a, that's what Barry said. With a new pavilion and that's so nice that I'm so glad we we the town bought that piece of property. Uh, that happened when I was on the town board and it came up for sale and there was somebody wanted to build a hotel down there okay. or something. I don't That's right, I forgot that. that. Yeah, I don't remember the name, and, but yeah. But the property was for sale and uh, and I was on the town board and and I wanted to buy it right then. <laughs> and and I got a lot of uh, basically everybody on the town board was was opposed to buying it, to spending oh, the money, man. and and I said, you know, when it's gone, it's gone, and there will never be another piece like it. Yeah. I said, we have to buy it now, and uh, and it took some arguing, but we did end up buying it. And every time I dare drive down that way, I'm so thankful that that we were able to do yeah. that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And what a what a great piece of property. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, we are trying to prevent the loss of another great piece of property on the bay. Yes. Yeah. With the old Webster Wellfield. You see people down there all the time. That's been you know, by many developers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, 
Well, I think the, the saving grace was when they were going to have to get it rezoned or something to do the hotel, weren't they? I mean, it was quite a process that they, maybe not, I don't know, yeah. but it was quite a process they were going to oh, have yeah. to go through. It wasn't going to be an easy thing, so yeah. it was, there, there was plenty of time to fight it, you yeah. know, to get it. Was it, was it a hotel or was it apartments? Hotel. It, yeah, it was, was it? I think it was. Yeah, that's what I yeah, because the what's the little restaurant across the street there? I don't know. It used to be Jack Daniels. I can't think yeah, what it's so called now, but uh, uh, that check. was involved in it too, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 They well, said I, they have to. They have a lease with the town or something. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The restaurant. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that 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 stretch where where the where you go back to Oklahoma Beach underneath the old railroad bridge and so on, that was the original outlet from the bay to the lake way back when way way back when i'm talking about when denonville came through oh really so on and so oh, forth. yeah yeah and then uh, uh i think probably when the railroad came along is where they cut the new one because i remember we were talking about that the other day remember everybody used to go down swimming off the railroad bridge oh, there sure. and, and like that and <laughs> people <laughs> lost their lives down there because uh, yeah. of the currents and everything they drowned yeah mm -hmm. But uh, even back then, the road was a little bit lower because I can remember driving through there where the dad driving through there when the water would be up to your hubcaps <laughs> and where it'd come across the, from the from the lake yeah. to the bay. Yeah. 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 You know, um, we were at the town board meeting. Last Thursday night, right for the plaques? Oh, yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. I have to stop and think about when it was, but uh, yeah, it was last Thursday. Ron, Ron opened the meeting by saying that Webster now owns North Pines. Had you heard that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was that's another good thing. Well, <coughs> the state wanted to get rid of it. Yeah. They are well. Uh, Webster's the town's maintained it all this time anyway. I mean, really, when you come right down to it, you know. They, and they never built a road through it. Yeah. Those ponds were barrel pits for the bridges, weren't they? For 104. Yes. Isn't that how that originally? Yeah. yeah. They that, needed they needed dirt to build up to put the bridges over Holt Road and Gravel Road <laughs> and stuff like that. So they dug it out of there and made them into the detention ponds for for the runoff from the uh, from the expressway. The uh, space of land between the two ponds was originally higher. The last time they redid the expressway, they took some more dirt out of yeah. it. But that was supposed to be a road that came off a Holt Road, go up and over the expressway, down, hit what is now Crescent Park. The walking trail? It, it was a, a road oh, yeah. going directly into Xerox, yeah. was the original design. That's how Crescent Park came to be. The state bought up that land yeah. to build down between the two ponds and yes. down directly into Xerox at the, the lower road down there where the town driveway comes off for the, yeah. for the uh, town recreation center was going directly into Xerox. Yeah. Yes. They did postpone the building of it to a next phase, and, and instead they put a half an exit at only from one direction at Phillips Road yeah. to service traffic in and out of the city. But there was not supposed to be an exit at Phillips Road. And that was that was another thing. Uh, what's his name? He used to be on Dick Travis. Uh -huh. He's the one that wrangled that away from the state. I think wasn't he? Was that that was probably when you were was that when you were sitting on the yeah. board? Yeah, it was on yeah. the board. Then. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was good to, to town obtain that. Yeah, that's, the, uh, the village has just acquired 75% of a house lot next to the expressway on North Avenue, on the on the south east side of the expressway. Backed up to Kircher Park, the yeah. last house there. They're, they only took a corner of that lot when they, for the expressway, and oh. the villages acquired that as part of the North Avenue project they're pu putting in yeah. now, as gateway to the village. Yeah. It'd be a little pocket park, mm -hmm. because the state had eighty percent of a house lot that they only <laughs> use one corner of. 
Well, you've, uh, over the last X number of years, have kind of followed in your dad's footsteps with uh, being a builder and a contractor and all of that. Still doing it. Yeah. 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 But the funny thing is, when when I look uh, look at back in your family, we've all done the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, it was uh, a funny time that uh, I was when and this this is a while ago. I was going through the Dodge reports, oh. and here's here's a, 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 a restaurant going in uh, uh, going in Eastview Mall. Oh, and okay. Don Rampy. So picked up the phone and dialed. And sure enough, a shirt tail relative. <laughs> Is that right? No. <laughs> but then there's a town down uh, in, uh, oh crap, I can't think of the name of the town right now, but in the Catskills. Oh. That there is a, there's another shirt tail cousin of my, uh, that he's active in Republican politics. He was the supervisor of the town. Uh, he's in, in the building business. And, and it's like, you you kind of dig up these people because yeah. you've got a very small family, but everybody's in the building business. Isn't it something? And wow. Yeah. No. So it's, it's funny. So are you and your two brothers uh, the last of the Rampies around this area right now, or the top of the chain, shall we the, call it? The three of them. My brother three Kurt uh, is is uh, operates a, a horse training stable in Florida. Oh. And, he's, uh, and then my brother Ran is um, is in Honeyoy, lives in Honeyoy. And uh, my brother Jerry lives out on the farm. Yeah, and Jerry, I Jerry know. Jerry works for me. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, so, but we're kind of the last of the family. So he, oh, he lives out on the farm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah. so Bill is uh, my son. Bill is the last one. And there's. There was another Bill. Yeah. In the in the family. Now is he a third? Uh, yeah. William the third. Yeah, he's the third. But uh, but he never. He said, "I never want to do what Dad and Grandpa do. <laughs> he wanted to work on cars. Well, he works for the Chase. And, oh. Uh, and he's, uh, he's always nine tenths of the time. I think he's at court working at Cornell. Oh. Okay. Uh, they're putting up one building after another. Yeah. Down that way, but uh, yeah. but. But, you know, but there's, you know, he's still doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so. Bill's, Bill and his dad both did a lot of work for an attorney by the name of Chuck Mills out on, um, on 31 near Turkey Road out in that area. A lot of those little office parks and everything that are out there and did quite a bit of that yeah, stuff. Yeah. You yeah. built and built and, are you still building? Yeah. Really? You're still working? I <laughs> keep saying I'm going to retire. I'm going to quit. Uh, now, I keep, last couple of years, I put it off a year. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you can't think of what you're going to do if you stay home all day, right? <laughs> you gotta have, you got to have a purpose. Yeah, I know. You're right. Well, well what, you know, about, what we, about, are you still racing? Yeah. He's doing Billy what? Racing. Oh, he races cars? Too? I drive yeah. a race car. <laughs> Sports cars, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you didn't come in for our Gary Morgan program. You should have come in for I that. I didn't, and I really wanted to win. Yeah. And, and I don't know what. We might have it again, but we're going to take. We're going to. He said we could have another tour down there because I've had three people come up to me. And he's one of them <laughs> at, at our talk. Asking about a tour of Gary Morgan. Have you ever, have you ever been to a bar? I, I have never been to a bar. Yeah, it's it's something. Yeah, it yeah, really is. Sure. And it's so nondescript, you wouldn't think all that stuff's in those barns sitting up on Harris Road there. Yeah. So he says as soon as he has a break, he, we can do it. But he said yeah. now he's got all his racing helmets, all he's taken helmets. down to Watkins Glen. Yeah. Because they're showing him from the beginning to the, yeah. Yeah. And so he's got yeah, quite he a collection. Yeah, he just did that, what, within the last six months or so yeah. when I talked to him. But, yeah. uh, but he's got he's got a ton of stuff in there. I mean, uh, street vehicles. He's got I think it seems like every piece of die cast in the world. And I'm standing in front of you, sorry guys. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. I'm just thanking you. Yeah, no, no, I'm just 
want to say thank you, and we'll give you a cup today with Western Museum. So every time you have your coffee in the morning, <laughs> and a card in there. And I'm going to send you home with a bouquet of flowers for Kathy. Yes, thank you. Because I talked to her on the phone, and she was so enthusiastic, and I know she was a big part of getting you to come here. <laughs> Oh, well, Denise was pushing it pretty heavy yeah. too for us, wasn't she? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I asked Denise. Well, as soon as Kathy mentioned it, I, you agreed? Gee, this sounds like fun. Oh, good. <laughs> good, I'm glad. It was so nice to be here. I mean, my gosh, I really enjoyed this. <laughs> Bill was actually uh, oh, good. Tom Board liaison to the point. museum yeah. at one stretch in his uh, Tom Board career. Oh, yeah, so. I was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but this this has been this has been a great uh, great break from from the job. <laughs> this is a good break for you for the day too, a little bit probably, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Normally, when I talk to him on the phone, you can hear him; he's moving all the time. You can almost hear his feet going about a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> well, when we Andy retired from Kodak. We went, and my daughter-in-law said, you got to look at the house, because we were going to go look at cottages. She said, look at the house on Phillips Road. you got to look at it. It's been for sale. They keep taking down the sign and put it back up. And he says, I do not want to paint. I do not want a wallpaper. I want to have a house. Oh, yeah, I want to have a house. So we go down, and we stop, and I see the curving staircase. And I said, oh, I don't even dare to hope that I live in a house like this. And then I look out the window, and Andy's walking down the driveway like this. And I said, oh, maybe I'll be <laughs> You gave and, yourself away. No? <laughs> he likes gardens and, you know, that stuff. So, And there was plenty of gardens there because it was just been Arbor Heights. So, yeah, we had the leftover tree. Some guy was telling us all these, here we've been there 20 years, and he came in the property yesterday, and he's telling us all these trees we got. He says, you got some gorgeous trees. This is beautiful yeah. property. <laughs> and it's because of Arbor Heights, you know, planted yeah. probably everything there. Stuff that never sold. Yeah, yeah. stuff that never wow. sold. So anyway, but this is for Kathy. Yeah, we have to oh, you tell her barn. I'm thinking of it. Oh, Kathy, she loves lilac. Good. Oh, it should be so excited. <laughs> and they still smell too. Oh, I can smell them here. Jen, that's so nice. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Very, Very appropriate for this time. Yeah, of year. you know what? You, you know what? Elisa just said, what a... What a good talk for Preservation Month. <laughs> you know, so yeah. that's true. It was a very nice talk. Do I get to stop? No. <laughs> you, know, you can keep going. That's, that's up to you. <laughs> that's funny. I'm sorry. Sometimes wind me up and I just ramble on forever. Well, that's that's what this is for, though. This is great. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's just during the month of, month of May. Month. Yeah, because it's National yeah. Preservation Month. So we do our historic plaques, which we identify homes in Webster that are kept up and maintained and usually over 100 years old, and uh, recognize them as well as barns. We've, been, we've done a couple barns because people have taken care of their barns, and that's not easy to do when you've got a roof that needs replacing. It's not, but you hate to see a barn lost. I know. I know. So uh, we recognize barns and we recognize homes every May and give them a plaque and the town pays for that. Yep. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, you've been there for a few of those presentations. Oh, yeah. were you? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's that and then we do this as a part of oral history. But this has been, uh, this has been good because the last few years it's been very interesting to me because growing up in the village I know a lot about around this area but some of the people that come in uh, live over in West Webster and like that and, and I've heard stories from West Webster and stuff of things that that I never knew about uh -huh. you know and uh, you know you you sort of fall into that category the, the western part of town and like that so yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. forgotten about the house on DeWitt Road, though. I always admired the house because it's which got... One, which it. house is it? What corner is it on? I can't think. And, and Did we give it a historic plaque? Was it an old house? No, no. Oh. No, no my father built the house. Oh, okay. You know, oh, boy. Well, it's it right, it's right on a corner, but 
there's a there's a garage, a separate garage, but it's interconnected with a oh, with a glass guy, the police uh, vestibule it's kind of thing, thing the, so to speak. The the, the 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 breezeway, but it was it was never uh, it wasn't glassed in when when my father built it. it was oh, all, all open. Okay, but the uh, but it's a it's a very nice house. But the house, my my aunt is uh, is an artist. It was an artist. She's dead now. But my whole bedroom, she painted with all uh, animals and oh, all really? stuff, and, and the whole, <laughs> the whole, uh, the whole room, all the way around. Oh my God! Remember, like there was a raccoon peeking out from behind the door when the door was. Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 and, and, and Jeff and uh, Jean Davis uh, was. A, do you remember Jean? Mm -hmm. uh, they they bought the house and lived in it quite a while. Oh, okay. And everybody always took care of that room and the that... paintings. But, <laughs> but then eventually somebody bought the house and that was all painted. That was it. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But that was a it's a nice location though. But the house is where you've got the road down to the well field, yeah. and then then. To, it would be to the north of that. There's a there's a, a two-story house. I think it's still there. It was Abbott's, and then then the the Dewitt Road house. Okay. Yeah, but that was yeah, but a nice design. Yeah, yeah. And, but the funny thing is, and I, I don't know, is that it's the part of the design of that house went to Shoemaker Road. Went to Whiting Road. If you oh, look really? At, when yeah. you kind of look at the three, the now three that you houses, mention it, yeah, and it's, it's just it's kind of a, a design that. Did your yeah. father build all three? Uh, no, he built two of them. Okay, I built the third one. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's on, that's my house. Yeah. But, but I lived in two of them. <laughs> well, that uh, that house that his dad did, I remember. My wife and I talked about it a lot of different times because my sister lived over up at Dewitt Road after my, my brother-in-law died and they sold the farm. Uh, she bought a house on, uh, on, a, on a corner down there and so we used to go buy that house quite often. Of course, you know, I don't know how many times I went by it in a town truck on the way to something yeah. one way or another. It's just a great little, great little place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that breezeway makes it for some reason. It just it kind of balances the whole thing when you look at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a nice, nice design. Yeah. But that's one. Did your father always have somebody, an architect, do that drawing for him? No, he no. would do it? Uh, uh, I don't want to step on Tom's No, no, you're no, not. No, no, that's all right. He's supposed to do it. My father did a lot of design work. In oh, fact, okay. just uh, I'm getting way off topic, but, but, <laughs> but during the Second World War, my father was was too young to, uh, to to enlist, and all of the construction companies in the city were were very busy building building stuff for for the war effort. And my father uh, was a t in his teens, in his mid teens, but he was doing design work for Stuart and Bennett and Hopeman and uh, uh, Fredericks. And, wow. And, all the big names in and there. Fredericks was yeah. with the company that was all the whole family was involved with Fredericks. Oh yeah, going going way back, but but he was doing a lot of design work and and when I was a kid, uh, for Christmas and stuff, I either got tools or <laughs> drawing instruments. <laughs> and I still got one of my first drawing boards. Oh yeah. Do you really? Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, but, but I've done I've done a a number of uh, oh yeah a lot of stuff that well see back in the in the old days and when the earth was flat as I always say <laughs> with, uh, when I was first starting my career in the middle sixties uh, the architectural firms in the Rochester area the general area were all there weren't very many of them, but they had a lot of people that worked in there. You'd, you'd have a, I w my original office would, that I worked for was Barrows, Parks, Moore, and Hall, and Brennan, and, and everybody affectionately referred to them as we the people. 
And a lot of times, if you told them who you work for, people who you work for, they oh, is that a, a law office? You know, because it sounds like that. Kind of, but there were probably at the at the peak, uh, probably thirty or forty people in our office, and some of the other ones around town would range anywhere from twenty to sixty people, and it was a very limited number of firms. Well, then in the nineteen early to middle 1970s when the first energy crunch came along. Remember you had to go on alternate yeah, days for right, gasoline right. depending yeah. on what your what your license plate was and like yeah. that. Uh, at that point in time a lot of the work died off and so registered architects that were in these bigger offices uh, went out on their own. So now instead of five or six firms with 40 to 60 people in it, you had 40 to 60 firms with three or four people in it. Prior to that, to do single family homes was not profitable for a big office like that with the overhead and everything else. You would do them. We did, uh, I can remember when I first went there, we worked on John D. Brush's Junior's house up on uh, Inspiration Point Road. but. Uh, you had a few guys like Don Hershey and some of those guys that were doing houses, the stone houses that you see, Art Deco, uh, 20s, 30s style stone houses over in Brighton. Nine times out of ten, Hershey would have done those. Yeah, a but, lot of those were built by my father. Yeah. A lot of Don stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, didn't do that. And there were a number of architectural designers around town who would have the availability of somebody that had usually a professional engineer uh, and most likely might have even worked for Kodak or whatever that way because there's no distinction when you get a professional engineer's license there's no distinction that says it has to be electrical, it has to be structural, it has to be plumbing, it has to be uh, heating and air conditioning or whatever that way. It's one just general title. And so these designers would do the homes and, and then these guys would put the stamp on them for, for that. Well, in the middle 70s, all of a sudden, it became economical for these smaller firms to do that. And there were a couple of them around the area here who ended up going to Albany and, and uh, raising a little bit of devil about the whole thing and so on and so forth. So there were uh, laws put in place at that point in time that basically put these architectural designers out of business. Mm -hmm. um, there's still a few of them around, but they have, uh, they have licensed people that are part of, they have to be part of the firm. So that's why when his dad was doing that kind of thing, that was the norm. So you're not stepping on my toes. That's no, the way it went. No, you know. I'm sure that you know who. Uh, yeah. Stamped a lot of my drawings. Uh, Louis Kareem was. No, I don't. Oh, you don't know. No. Oh, that uh, he was right in the middle of that. Who was? Uh, Louis Kareem. Oh he, yeah. He was. He would stamp. Yeah. Uh, he stamped a lot of stuff. And yeah. And I know that there, he was. When all of this went on. Yeah. Uh, the architects were really going after him. He, yeah. Yeah. There was a guy, uh, his name was Gordon Bull, and he lived over over in the Brighton area, I believe, someplace. But they used to laugh about, on Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock, there would be a line of guys all the way out to the end of the driveway with rolls of drawings under their arms. <laughs> and at 9 o'clock, the overhead door would open, and he'd be sitting there at a card table with his stamp and the stamp pad and pen next to him, and you bring your drawings up, he'd go through them, make maybe a couple of ch changes or whatever, stamp them and sign them, and you'd hand him $50 and off he went. You know? so, but uh, he probably made, who knows, maybe $1,000 every Saturday morning just stamping plans. <laughs> so, but anyway. Before they caught him, right? <laughs> and so we gotta have rules around it. Yeah, okay, so laws. It was a different time. Yeah, I yeah. Know. And, and it changed very oh, fast. Yeah, it did. Yeah. 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 And and the quality of the building, like with his dad and, and Bill's career and so on and so forth, is 
is a lot better than what you see these days. And I mean, you know, if you go back to your house, the quality is even better. You couldn't reproduce your house these days. Oh, no, no, no. You know? And it's the same thing with the cabin. Five foot shingles. I mean, you know, who would ever think of something like <laughs> that, you know? Well, now they wouldn't even be made of wood. They'd be made out of plastic or metal know, or something. I know. You know? So, yeah, it's a big difference.